Good afternoon, everybody. AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So the 6-meter amp is done. I just have to hook it up to the 240 line and test it. I've uh, I got something else done, a slick trick I, I thought of, and I implemented it. So I'll go over that. I'm going to show you everything here that I did. So I don't have all the screws in the cover on, on the power supply part, and I need to clean off the marker here where I mark the panel and uh, clean the front panel up and just little touch-up stuff but I'm gonna go over it all real quick okay and I got the screws and the top cover they're not all the way in I'm gonna take this part so you, so you can see it so anyway you got the play voltage meter down there the uh, plate current meter the grid current meter input tune pi network output network which is a regular Pi, it's a uh, L-Pi network. This covers the entire six meter band. So, I've done it this way many times in the past. I've built a lot of amplifiers. I like using these, th these are called Supercon connectors. Uh, these are extremely expensive new, so I found a couple that were new and yeah, they don't match. They have green. Uh, ones for the receptacle side and then yellow ones for the plug side, but they are new, but they're you're not from like a distributor I think they're like over a hundred something bucks each. So you got the twist lock plug This has the B negative It has the gr a ground and two 120 legs so 240 that feed the relay supply in there. Everything's fused I have not put the fuses in yet. I need to calculate all the fuse sizes so here's the cathode return see so, you know, as a this type of connection and it's set up so if this were left disconnected you wouldn't have an open between the cathode and the center tap so these are two additional grounds right here I have not tightened the nuts yet and I didn't put the nut on this side but you can see this will be nice and snug and this will come off and the whole RF deck can be moved off the power supply section same over here. So you have one ground, two grounds, three grounds, and you have the B positive. The B positive is within this braided material, it's GTO wire. It's hardwired inside the RF deck. I'm going to take the cover off so you can see that. Once again, over here, you have all the fuse holders, the filament transformer, soft start blower. I've not calculated the values yet. Boy, the caps aren't installed, so that's just uh, minor stuff. You gotta do that and then hook it up and I go very slowly when it comes to testing something just in case there's an issue so here's the filament voltage adjust this connects to the variac so we can run the filament at the rated voltage for 200 hours then drop it to extend the tube life per Karen Karen feeding of power grid tubes okay so I'm gonna pull the cover off and show you the inside these are strain reliefs I have zip tie on either side uh, so the these are for the filament voltage for the filament of the tube and uh, got the four conductor SOWR so this is fed this is the, the wire that actually feeds it this is number two and it's three conductor since nothing in here runs on 120 uh, no neutral is needed just a ground and two hots okay so I'll be back see you guys soon oh one other thing the filament test points all this stuff is covered in the other videos, but some people don't see those, so that's why I'm repeating myself. So I apologize for that. And that's 71610 for the output. Okay, so see you soon. Okay, so prior to taking the cover off, I want to show the cover. This is a perforated piece of metal. The whole RF deck inside is exposed, so no air will be trapped. You know, some people will put the chimney in the top cover. I've explained why I don't do that in the past. Because then you can't you can't operate it with the cover off one you know if you're doing testing and then two the tube stem doesn't get the proper cooling and a lot of times it it can overheat or it just runs really hot so okay so I'm gonna go ahead and take the cover off it's really thick material I'm gonna take all the screws out and I will show you how I hardwired to be positive so I will see you in a second so the covers off tube is not installed. It'll have a clamp going around to secure the connection right here to the side of the anode. Here's the B positive off the plate choke. 
this clip will connect to one of the fins. So I have the B positive coming in through the braided material. It goes over to a standoff and then I have Teflon wire with a with a piece of Teflon tube over it going to the choke. I wanted a strain relief just in case this was yanked on. I mean it's pretty secure but I just you know I, I wanted to add that safety there so so it wouldn't have any stress on the actual choke. So I'm all about safety. I really want things to be safe. Uh, someone can say, well, I'm going to show how it disconnects in the power supply, which is relatively easy. Keep in mind, the customer's going to get this. He can easily now move the RF deck off and, you know, work on it if he had to, if he wanted to do something to it. Uh, but it's like, you connect it once, that's it. You know, he doesn't have to connect, disconnect, and, you know, you have those milling plugs, you have other plugs, and that can be dangerous if someone has kids or grandkids or, you know, you touch it, you know, if you don't, if, you know, it's just dangerous. So I, I prefer doing it this way. So if there was a break in the GTO wire, which is rated for 15 kV, it would touch the strap, which is at ground potential. And it's obviously grounded in here. So, like I said, one ground, two ground, three, four. That's four separate grounds. So very very well grounded to the power supply section okay so i'm going to pick the rf deck up place it on the floor and i will show you the trick idea that i came up with last night okay see you soon okay so here's the idea i came up with last night i told my buddy jim he thought it was pretty slick so I went to the store and I bought some sixteenth of an inch thick angle aluminum, one inch per side. And I dismounted the blower from the eighth inch thick T6 6061 aluminum plate. I cleaned off all the old silicone and I put some non-permanent adhesive between the plate and the aluminum. And then I put silicone on the other side between the aluminum and the actual blower then I tighten it up real tight so the RF deck sits right on top of it lines up and I have the pressure interlock over here the bung thing that will protrude into the bottom of the RF deck this will have this type of gasket neoprene this is way too thin so I bought some 3 8 material and it will be the size of the bottom of the RF deck. So this will this will protrude maybe about an eighth of an inch thick. Uh, I'm sorry, about an eighth of an inch into the bottom of the RF deck. So I really really thought this out. It won't be near any components or anything. Originally, like I said in another video, I thought about putting angle aluminum, just a short strip of it on either side, uh, and then have studs come out and just line the holes in the angle aluminum up. With, aluminum up with the studs and then put nuts on you know to keep it in place but now he can just drop it down on this and perfect you know won't go anywhere and it's a lot easier and it looks a lot cleaner like I said I need to use goof off and I'll get all of this marker off but it helps to mark plates just uh, some advice when you're drilling holes and everything because you know with alignment stuff you know it won't you know, get mixed up real quick if you don't that's my personal lamp. That's where it's on the floor. Okay, so I'll show you the bottom of the RF deck. You can see the square hole, and then there's the hole for the pressure interlock. Okay, so I'm going to pull the cover off. I only have uh, one or two screws in it, so I'm going to pull that off, and I'll show you how the B-positive is connected within the power supply. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I still have to do a final vacuum in here, and attach the proper hardware to the plate primary but I'm going to feed that with a Variac when I go to test it before I fire it up so you got the B positive coming in and this side of the ground strap is grounded you know the the uh, braided material going over the GTO wire and this is a stud it's number 10 so there's a nut below the ring terminal so you got the GTO wire coming out and it connects to the standoff which is connected to the fuse and uh, 
this goes back to the play voltage meter, okay? So basically all he's got to do is take the screw out and there's a internal truth washer, you know, lock type washer underneath it. And he takes that nut off and the washer and then this pulls right out. So there's enough slack, as you can see, for the RF deck to sit on the floor. He slips it in, connects the ground, connects the B positive, and he's ready to rock and roll. So that's about it. I'm very proud of this. Came out really nice. You can see the bottom where I see the silicone. You can see how the aluminum overlaps beyond the flange. So if you ever had to change the blower, which most likely would not have, not ever have, you probably would never have to do, it can come off, you know, obviously it's just silicone, it's not epoxyed on or anything crazy. So, but uh, yeah, we'll be back, I want to show one more thing. Back, you know, there, my friend Jim said that there are people that have been saying things about, you know, they've built this, built that, and they would have done it this way or done it that way. And he said, well, can you show some pictures, you know? I just wanted to show you how long I've been doing this. I mean, I love amplifiers. I love fixing them, building them. Unfortunately, you know, it just takes so much time to build them. And I'm so busy with the repairs that I don't get to build as much as I used to. But I'm going to start doing the 80 through 15 meter amps with a progressively shorting rotor switch. It won't be 10. It's just going to be too tough to get it up on 10. So 80 through 15. And, uh, you know, but I've been doing it so long. I literally would take pictures with a camera with film in it, you know, so you can see some pictures of an amp I had made, you know, I just have pictures and pictures, these are just the, some of them, you know, and they're, you can see 2012, and you know, all the other pictures are on my computer and another hard drive, you know, because then I had a digital camera, but, you know, after a certain year, but I just love doing it, you know, so I think anyone that built something, takes pictures. I mean, I'm very proud of this. I mean, I would I would run this myself. I, it's a really cool amp. Um, unfortunately, doing this stuff all day long kind of sucks the fun out of it for me. You know, I don't really work on anything of my own. I mean, my amp's down there, that Cubic, that works. I had to steal a part out of it. But, you know, I have a Kenwood amp that needs some work that's mine. And just so busy here with other people's stuff. But... So here's the hose that'll connect to the to that uh, barb fitting on the bottom of the cover for the interlock. But I appreciate everybody staying with me on this, and I have a couple amps to fix. And when I get those done, I I will carefully test this before I just fire it right up. And the next video you guys will see will be it producing power. So, and then I can finally get it on its way to the owner. So, still owe it the other half of the payment for it. And uh, just been so busy. He's been very, very understanding. I really appreciate it. He wants to stay anonymous. But, uh, like I said, when this is done, you see it work. And I know there was another person that was doing stuff like this, and he's since retired. And... If you're in another country or wherever you are, you know, you want an 80 through 15, 100% duty, just like, you know, this thing with 6,000, give me a call. You know, um, you know, look just like this or, or better, you know. So, I mean, it'll, look, it'll have a big rotary switch in there, so um, yeah, it won't be a monoband like this, but I don't know if I, I don't think I've ever seen another, you know, I've never seen another 6 meter amp with this tube in it. I know where there there were some custom. I think there was at least one custom Tetrode six meter amp made, but it was a basket case that had oscillation issues and all sorts of other negative screen current um, issues and just very very unstable. But this this will be a nice, simple, stable, reliable amplifier with a very robust tube. It's a very robust grid. And it won't take a ton of power to excite it to, to its full output. But thank you again. And I'll end with, if any of you guys need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. My phone number is 203-892-4119. My website is amprepair.com.
ampguy.com. That's K, uh, I'm sorry, ampreparguy.com. And someone made a comment about the blower. So my friend Jim, uh, I don't know, if, but I could stick my fist in here. You know, it's not a small EDM Pabst. And I'll show you the model if you want to look it up. It exceeds the tube specs for the tube's maximum anode dissipation. So, thanks for watching. 73.